welcome back once again now today in continuation of what we have done in the last three lectures we are going to talk about inductance which is of two type mutual inductance and self inductance and which has you can see the dimensions of ml is square t minus 2 part ampere square and this is called in the honor of Joseph Henry the American physicist we call it Henry so whether it is uh, mutual inductance or self inductance the unit of inductance is Henry okay. now if there is a solenoid a long solenoid then we have the flux there in the case of uh, solenoid is equal to mu naught n i okay in fact b is equal to mu naught n i uh, b is equal to mu naught n i flux Phi B is equal to mu naught and I into A, the area. Okay, this is the magnetic field multiplied by area because Phi B is uh, B dot T S R uh, B D S R B S. So the matter is that Phi B is proportional to the current I, or we can say that d phi b over dt is proportional to di upon dt okay and so we can say that if the number of turns is n then n phi b which is called the flux linkage that is also proportional to the current r okay so we find that the constant of proportionality over here that is the slope of n phi b to i curve that is inductance and similarly if we go for d phi b over dt we will get the emf and this is uh, d i over dt d i over dt the rate of change of electric current and then also the slope is inductance uh, whatever the value <coughs> anyway now let's talk about mutual inductance mutual inductance is due to two coaxial solenoids one with the radius r1 and another with the radius r2 the outer solenoid s2 has the radius r2 the number of turns in the inner solenoid is equal to n1 per unit length and n2 per unit length in the outer solenoid. <coughs> I have not shown uh, the windings but on the left hand side of your board will appear a diagram from a book and that will show uh, the actual windings uh, else if I want to do here then it will become H pitch okay the length of the solenoid either solenoid is L which is far far larger as compared to R1 and R2 to R2 we also assume that there is no fringing effect then I am just showing you the cross section this is the inner solenoid and this is the outer solenoid n1 r1 i1 n2 r2 uh, i2 this is the currents which are flowing through them okay. now these things the parameters of s1 and the parameters of s2 are given over here the currents the number of turns per unit length the radii and the actual number of turns in the system now by definition 
n1 phi 1 is equal to m12 into i2 mutual inductance in qual number 1 due to qual number 2 m12 is also known as coefficient of mutual induction. Now, the magnetic field B2 is equal to mu naught N2 I2. Okay. And N1 is equal to N1 12. And the area is equal to pi R1 square because it is a circular cross section. So I can write n1 phi 1 as equal to n1 is equal to n1 l from here and the area pi r square mu naught n2 into i this is about the magnetic field multiplied by the area of the coil under consideration that is inner one so by definition from here I can compare this M12 with whatever is left over here and what I find is M12 is equal to mu naught N1 N2 pi R1 square into L. Okay. Mu naught the permeability of free space N1 N2 are just two numbers pi is also a number R1 is the given radius that is R1 and L they belong to the geometry of the system so that means this depends upon the pure geometrical consideration and the material consideration what are the material what is the material inside okay so this is a one let's take the reverse case in the reverse case, N2 phi 2 by definition is equal to M21 into I1. Now, like here, we have B1 which is equal to mu naught N1 I1, and then we can take okay. So this when I write therefore that N2 phi 2 is equal to this then n2 is equal to n2 into n area is pi r1 square and the field is mu naught n1 into i1 okay and put them together and compare this equation m12 with this equation then we find that the value of m21 is equal to the same mu naught n1 n2 pi r1 square l which is m12 the same as this one and therefore this is equal to m say now that shows m12 is equal to m21 is equal to m okay because the parameters are the same the only thing which has to be understood is why both relations we are taking pi r1 square this is because it is if it is in the outer solenoid what matters is the inner solenoid and when it is inner solenoid then the field is confined within the inner solenoid and therefore we have to take uh, this so flux only through s1 matters okay where in the area is equal to pi r1 square next now here is a kind of a reaction which is happening to changes in magnetic flux okay changes in the current and it is particularly very important case of alternating currents where there is a rapid change in the value of the current and the associated uh, emf etc and uh, therefore there is a reaction okay so these uh, inductances in the presence of uh, uh, changing magnetic field or changing current they give rise to uh, reactive inductive reactants which we will talk omega l later on 
uh, shortly in alternating currents. So the next item is to uh, discuss L, the self-inductance of a single solenoid. Okay, even a single coil, you can have it. And I have not made that diagram because you can just imagine that there is a single uh, solenoid uh, enters, okay, and with small n being the number of terms per unit length, the length of the solenoid is taken with the same L, okay. Now, n phi b again is proportional to R, okay. So, n phi b can be said to be equal to L i by definition. Okay. And there is developed an EMF. This this is like this N phi B versus I slope is equal to L. Proportionality is there. So this EMF which is developed is minus Lenz law DDT of N phi B is equal to minus L into D I D T. Okay. Minus DDT of Okay, so this turns out to be equal to because L is a constant, I is a variable, and the nature of my EMF is that it always opposes the rate of change of current. Whether the current is increasing or decreasing, always it opposes that rate of change. Now I can write n phi b n is equal to n b is equal to mu naught n i okay and phi b becomes mu naught n i into a where a is the area of cross section of the solenoid which can be said to be equal to pi r square where r is the radius of the solenoid so i can write okay by comparison i can say that l is equal to n phi b upon i so it turns out to be equal to assimilating these things together mu naught n squared l a okay which in case we fill the space in the solenoid with another material okay maybe uh, soft iron the core itself is that of soft iron etc then this becomes equal to mu which is the permeability of that medium n square l a and which turns out to be equal to the relative permeability in permeability of free space n square l a so this is the case okay now l has the role of inertia similar to inertia m you know inertia which is indicated as m in the case of mechanics so that role is played by l in the case of uh, electrical systems now this uh, electro no emf is also known as back emf back emf so sometimes when you go to the electrician for checking your uh, electrical connections in a car etc then he sometimes come out with a statement sir back marra okay so back marra that means emf is being generated okay now in doing that if the work done is there that work done is stored as energy which we call magnetic potential energy which can be retrieved if required if desired if it is there so the power so what ddt of w this will turn out to be a li di dt and that gives us the dt and dd will cancel out so dw i can write here as integral dw simple 
This is zero to I, L I D I. So L I take out, and this is integral I D I, zero to I, I square by two by the integration formula, which I need not say at this stage because the integration formula I've talked to you about many a many a many a time. Okay. So this is equal to half L I square, which is similar to the kinetic energy is equal to half mv square, which we obtain by the formula like this, p dv. Okay, from zero to v, and p is equal to mv, so that turns out to be equal to half mv square. You can do it. Scribble it up. At the same time, if you look here, n phi v and i, if they are multiplied together. <coughs> Then what we get is the water, the energy. Okay. And if you want, you can say that the energy stored is given by this area because this is the I value and this is the Ni value. I'm uh, sorry, Li value. Okay. Li value. So when I multiply, and if you don't subscribe to integration there, here also you can understand that there is a strip and this is Li into Di, Di can be taken over here and then the integration is carried out over the, this and this is equal to uh, Li into I by 2 because you can see that this is here I have a rectangle and the rectangle's area is equal to Li into I so we obtain the same result half a i square if I look into this thing and of course you have to understand that n phi b r l i multiplied by i that has got the dimensions of uh, the energy is stored. Now we'll do a couple of uh, relevant exercises before I wind up this chapter. In this chapter there is uh, uh, a description of how alternating voltage is obtained but that I will take up with the AC in the next lecture itself. But I will tell you how we can obtain from these relations a beautiful relation and that is the energy density of a magnetic field which will turn out to be equal to like half epsilon naught e squared. Remember which is the energy density of an electric field and this will turn out to be equal to by substituting one upon mu naught here and b over here so this will be equal to b square upon 2 epsilon naught I'm sorry mu naught and that is also we will do and we will see as what happens if there are uh, two coils not very far off but close to each other and how they affect each other. So these two exercises I'm going to do uh, short. So let's do a couple of exercises. In the first one, we have currents flowing simultaneously in two nearby points. Okay. One coil with the subscript 1 and the other one with the subscript so n1 phi 1 is equal to m11 i1 due to the current in itself plus m12 i2 where m11 is equal to m so when we uh, find the EMFs. The EMF E1 is equal to minus M11 DI DI1 DT minus M12 D, DI2 DT which is uh, becomes equal to minus L1 DI1 DT minus M12 DI2 DT and similarly we can write for E2 in the other coil that will be equal to 
minus L2 dI2 dt minus M21 dI1 dt etc. So that way we can calculate the unit. Okay. Another exercise. We take a straight solenoid, length is much more than its radius, its area of cross section is equal to capital A, okay. The magnetic field inside is uniform everywhere. So we have to calculate the magnetic energy which is, is stored. Uh, when the current in the solenoid is high, and then we have to find out what is the current density. I am um, sorry, energy density. So we start with the formula that we obtain. The potential energy to the magnetic field is stored in the solenoid is equal to half Li square. And we have already calculated as mu naught n square a l and b is equal to mu naught and i or i is equal to b upon mu naught n okay where n is the number of turns per unit length so substituting the value of l and i i get this half mu naught n square a l into i square which is b upon mu naught n whole square when you work it out, we obtain it as half 1 upon 2 mu naught b square a l. And now we see that a l is the volume of the inside of the solenoid. So, of course, the energy density which is defined as the energy divided by the volume turns out to be equal to b square upon 2 mu naught which if we compare with ue the energy density of a uniform electric field or electric field of value e anywhere so it is half epsilon naught e square if i compare this with this i find they are similar instead of e square we are writing b square instead of epsilon naught we are writing 1 upon mu naught etc so this way we have come to an end of uh, this chapter because i will uh, club the production of uh, alternating current which we obtain just to give you an idea if there is a magnetic field b and there is an area associated with the coil A and B phi and E is equal to minus D phi B or DT. So I can either change the value of B or change the value of E and in the case of uh, a generator, AC generator, it is the valuation of A instead of B and the B is made constant and A is made to be equal to A cos of omega t so that way we produce we get a generator uh, ac generator and we'll talk about that in the next lecture thank you very much for being with me i enjoyed hopefully you enjoyed